Today on Gamma Ray, we're going to tear open writing. You think you can handle that? A great horror script is more than just a series of jump scares. The best ones communicate fear through a variety of elements. How do you like it? Before the lights flicker, the camera shakes, a victim screams, the writer puts a series of words on a blank page. You exceed the cosmic darkness. Creating a compelling story that takes us on a terrifying journey. You're all going to die down here. It's said that the pen is mightier than the sword. I'm going to sit here. But in a horror film, the pen and the sword will kill you. You're going to die. Good horror writing creates a mood, a visual setting. It directs our eye and manipulates our emotions. It convinces us to invest in someone and then rips them from our lives. One of the first ways a horror film does this is through scene direction. Here, sir, I use mine. Scene direction informs the visuals. It describes the tone and action of the film, starting with the dark and sinister world we're trapped in, introducing us to the nightmare we're in for. Interior, Cole's house, night. Cole moves briskly to the door, halfway down the corridor. Cole turns on the light in the bathroom and pees into the toilet. A large figure moves past the doorway. Cole instantly stops peeing. His body becomes very still. He reaches for the toilet handle and flushes. He doesn't come out of the bathroom at first. He just stands there and stares into the darkness of the hall. His breath forms tiny clouds in the cold air. Cole finally steps out into the hallway. His eyes catch a slant of light now coming from the kitchen. Cole hesitates before being drawn to the kitchen. He moves down the hall, coming to a stop in the doorway of the kitchen. Cole stares at the back of a person cooking on the stove. Cole's fear slowly fades away. Mama? No. Dinner is not ready. For the cast and crew, the screenplay is the blueprint. That which camera, lighting, editing, production design, and every other department relies on to literally get everyone on the same page. And it does so by creating the suspense, fear, mood, and relentlessness of each scene. There was an accident. Am I please use your phone? Because horror movie screenplays rely on a lot of action. Since often, characters are doing their best to keep quiet. Since people die in horror movies, characters are an incredibly important and many times short-lived part of a horror script. But whether they're on the page for a scene or the whole movie, a compelling, interesting, and complex character needs to feel real. Like us. If we understand them, we relate. If we relate, we feel for them. We want them to make it out of their dire situation. We invest in their survival. Our hearts race as we will them to make the best choices and outsmart the monster. Lewis, what are you doing? Originally, that was often portrayed by the final girl trope. Coined by film studies professor Carol J. Clover, the final girl is the sole survivor, and usually a woman, of the monster or slasher, who ultimately succeeds in slaying the beast. You know, until it comes back in the sequel. Honestly, make sure they're dead before you drop your weapon and walk away. I beg you, for the safety of all of us. Sure, it's fun to take pleasure in watching a villain or fool get their comeuppance. You're a terminated fucker. We relish the moment, giving us a taste of what it feels like to be the executioner. But getting us invested in someone we care about and watching them befall a terrible fate rips away our own safety and lets us know what we want isn't part of evil's plan. Dialogue is another effective tool in moving the story forward and giving information in a fun and exciting way. A character can express what we're all feeling after an incredibly tense moment. I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch! It can be a foreboding foreshadow. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. Or just two perfectly written words. They're here. That move the plot along while sending shivers down our spine at the same time. But, of course... There's nothing to fear if you don't have a monster. The writer has to create something unfamiliar, keeping us out of our comfort zone, but keeps us grounded and tethered to reality just enough to believe that what we're watching could happen to us on the wrong day, at the wrong moment. 
whether it's a poltergeist, slasher, mutant, or alien. A good monster surprises us and turns the tables on our expectations. It Follows so effectively used a monster that, although slow moving, had one unending purpose, to keep following until it got to its target. There is no scene in the movie that gives us a second to relax. We scan the background looking for it in every scene, forcing us to sit in our dread from the moment we see it till the moment the credits roll. Yeah. Okay. Other monsters frighten us, but force us to reckon with the idea that we aren't that different from them. And if our circumstances changed, we could even be them. <laughs> then, other times, nothing is what it seems. The writing needs to surprise us with twists and turns, get us invested in a character or situation, and then shock us with something more horrible in return. The action, characters, monsters, and dialogue are always throwing us off our game. So even when we think we've won, we just can't be sure. Where are those keys, Rose? You know I can't give you the keys, right, babe? Horror movies are rife with tropes. Cabins in woods, non-working phones, maniacs with machetes. So the best ones toy with what we've been conditioned to see and manipulate them in front of our eyes. Oh, this is awesome. But seriously, I, I cannot stress this enough. Just always make sure the bad guy is dead before you go to sleep. And on that note, I think it's time to hide our tools and bury the body. Make sure to congratulate yourselves. You made it out alive this time. For all the latest episodes, subscribe to Gamma Ray, and don't forget to share your favorite horror scripts in the comments below. I'm Suzanne Kiley, and this is Dissecting Fear. <laughs> <laughs>